Hello viewer. Uh, we are watching Elimu TV, your TV station where you watch and uh, It is a warm welcome to you. Uh, this is the Christian Religious Education Form 3 and I will be your teacher, Mr. John Gatuma. Uh, we have lesson 11 and uh, we have been looking at the unity of believers as uh, chapter 2 and we are looking at the symbols that explains the unity of believers. Uh, we say there are various images or various symbols that are used and uh, today we want to discuss the symbol the bride symbol the bride and our uh, reading that will guide our lesson today it shall be the second corinthians 11 uh, from verse 2 and also in the book of revelation the last book of the bible 21 21 uh, verse 1 all the way through 12. That will be our guiding uh, scriptures for this particular lesson. So, but before we go uh, into this, I want us to review the assignment that uh, I gave you. I want us to review the assignment that I gave you. Here is the assignment that I gave you and uh, some of the expected answers for the same. The question was, discuss the charge or assembly of God as the symbol of the unity of belief. Discuss the church or assembly of God as the symbol of the unity of belief. We say the church can be used to explain about the unity of believers. And uh, here are some of the expected answers. So assembly of God, a church being an assembly of God, is a coming together of people of diverse social and cultural background who recognize the Lordship of Jesus. So they are the believers who come together, and they come together to recognize the Lordship of Jesus. They gather in a particular building. This is the one we call the church. But the church actually is the assembly of people of God. Uh, just as the husband and wives, should love one another for Christ for, for Christians are called to express love to one another and to love God so they are called with a, 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 a theme of uh, loving and love they are supposed to love one another just as the husband and wives love each other uh, the Christian are called to express love to one another and also to love God who is the father, the head of the church. The husband being the head of the family, Jesus is also the head of the church. So the church uh, being founded by Jesus, uh, they recognize that Jesus is the head of this church and therefore they are supposed to uh, come together and recognize the Lordship of Jesus who is the head of the church, just as the husband is the head of a particular family. Also likened to the relationship between the husband and wife, and that one we have said, the relationship between husband and wife, this is the relationship of love, and therefore the, the Christian are supposed to express love uh, to each and every one as a member of the church. This one is to build the body of Christ. There is no way they can build the body of Christ without you uniting uh, to one another. They are supposed to seek for reconciliation. They are supposed to uh, help one another and also express love. So uh, church, finally, church, uh, that is the Christians, they are expected to be united with Christ just as the husband and wife are united in marriage. So in marriage, there it is a covenant, uh, covenant relationship and that is the marriage whereby love is, is expected. And therefore the Christian being the uh, they are the one forming the church. They are supposed to be united uh, with Christ Jesus. So they are supposed to abide by what Christ said and therefore they follow exact teachings of. So in today's lesson we shall uh, in today's lesson we shall discuss the church as the symbol. And the church uh, being described, the, the, the bride of Christ is the described as the bride of Christ and we are, are betrothed to Christ Jesus. And this is according to 2 Corinthians 11 verse 12. And uh, this figure that we call the church as a symbol, this figure foretells of an uh, an event, even great, even greater relationship with Christ in future. So that this means that Christ will come for the, His church, will come for His people, and therefore, as uh, the church or uh, as the bride of Christ, they are supposed to, as uh, the bride of Christ, this is the church, they are supposed to. Uh, 
uh, expect Christ to come for them because this figure foretell or predict an of an even even greater relationship with Christ Jesus. And this one is also found in Revelation 19, uh, 6 to 9, and also Revelation 21, verse 2. Uh, maybe by reading the book of Revelation 21, 1 to, uh, through 4, and I, this is the reading of the scripture, and I saw a new earth, a new, a new, a new earth, and God himself will be with them. And he will wipe out every fear from their eyes, and the dead will be no more. Neither will mourning nor outcry, nor pain be any more. The former things have passed away. That is the Revelation 21. It tells us about the future. Because we have said that the church, because we are betrothed to Christ Jesus, and uh, uh, this one predict uh, the greater relationship that will happen in future, whereby Christ Jesus will come for his church. So reading by the Cor uh, Corinthians 11, uh, 13 through 15, this is what the scripture says, For such are false apostles, deceitful work, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed uh, into an angel of light. 15. Therefore, it is no great thing if these ministers also be transformed as the ministers of the righteousness, whose end shall be according to their work. That means that... Uh, the church uh, having various components, having various organs. Uh, we have the apostles, we have the Christians, we have uh, the teachers of the word, uh, and so on. So these ministers, they are, the Bible is telling us in verse 13 that uh, there are some various false apostles and uh, deceitful workers who the work is transforming themselves into the apostle of Christ. And therefore, they are supposed to ensure that when they are in this, uh, as the, the church, which is the bride of Christ, they are supposed to be uh, keen because uh, when they are keen, uh, they will be able to uh, live and expect much from God. So, Uh, so this is the, the bride, uh, Jesus coming for his church, is Jesus coming from his church. And the description of the bride, uh, it has been seen, as you can see in this picture, the description of the bride has uh, been uh, seen as the root uh, in the Old Testament. And that is, the, you can see the Isaiah 54, you see from 5 to 8. And, and this is where the Israelites, they were referred to as the bride. But unfortunately, they proved unfaithful to God when they broke the Sinai covenant. This is the bride and the bridegroom. The bride and the bridegroom. And we say the bride, uh, a good picture is seen. Uh, the bride and bridegroom, they come together for mutual submission. And therefore, that means uh, the husband is supposed to express love and uh, they're supposed to have love and wife is supposed to be faithful uh, to God. And therefore, the Israelites being described as the bride. Remember, Israelites, they, are, they were formed of the Jews. And the Jews, Jews are that they are found in the Old Testament. But in the Old Testament, you will see the Israelites or the Jews changing to Christians. And the Christian, we are calling them Christian because they are following Christ. So they are supposed to be faithful in one another. And this one is found in the New Testament. And the bride, it uh, represents the people of God, uh, where the bridegroom is the Christ. So the bride symbolizes the people of God, and the bridegroom uh, symbolizes Christ. So the bridegroom, uh, the br bridegroom bride relationship that you can see here. Uh, it expresses God's sacrificial love. And the writer of uh, Revelation that we have read, the writer of uh, John, the Corinthians, uh, they have foreseen the destiny of the bride, that is the church, and emerging to infantry in the end of time, that is, in the end of time, that is in uh, Revelation 21st. So, the bride is described as the new Jerusalem, who is uh, beautifully dressed. The new Jerusalem, uh, this is Christ the bridegroom. And we have said uh, the Christ in the book of Revelation that we have seen, and also in the book of uh, 
second uh, Corinthians. We have just said that the, the, the bride in the New Testament, the bride symbolizes the people of God and the bridegroom symbolizes the Christ. So therefore this relationship should is all about God's sacrificial lamb that he asked his son to come and die for the sake of uh, the, the human sin. So the bride is described as the new Jerusalem who is uh, beautifully dressed. You can see is uh, much beautifully dressed uh, for her husband. So this means that God's relationship with his people is perfect and no one uh, will last eternally. So the bride patience in the union with Christ will not be in vain. So God will wipe every tear from his people's eye. So there will be no death, mourning or pain. So the bride has, pre has prepared herself for her husband who will come in the future. So she is uh, always beautifully dressed. So this means the church of God should be pure and holy and they are not supposed to carry out everything. As you can see the church on the other side of the picture, you see the church is waiting, the people of God is waiting for uh, the husband to come. And therefore, uh, they are supposed to be ready, they are supposed to be ready so that they can marry, they can enjoy this sacrificial love, uh, love that were there in Christ Jesus. Uh, basically, about the bride, uh, we have said in the Old Testament, God tells Israel as a bride. And in the New Testament, Christ Christian are uh, the bride, uh, that is the New Jerusalem. So God or uh, Jesus Christ is the bridegroom. And therefore, this is all about hope. They are supposed to have hope, and this hope uh, is they're supposed to have hope in God. They're supposed to believe in God, whatever God is, uh, has promised that he will come for them. They're supposed to hope and expect for him. Oh, well, we progress. Uh, the Christian are reminded that the earth is a temporary home. Uh, the early home is heaven, so the holy city of God. We have just said uh, that uh, as they ex Christian as they expect for Jesus Christ to come and to establish this uh, relationship. So they are reminded that they are not supposed to live eternally, but they will, uh, the earth is not is a temporary home. They have a real home, a real home is in heaven, and therefore they are supposed to be holy to enter in this holy city of God. And for them to be holy, they are supposed to uh, purify themselves. And uh, as the church, they are supposed to ensure righteousness, no corruption. They are supposed to come together to help one another. They're supposed to come together and uh, express the love, the sacrificial love of God. So just as the bride is expected to be faithful to the, her husband, so are Christians expected to be faithful to God by observing the covenant way of life. Remember, by observing the covenant way of life, we have the Sinai covenant that was a covenant between uh, God and uh, the children of Israel through Moses. And we say that in order to establish the new uh, Israel, the new Israel, former uh, different from the former. And therefore this new former, they were supposed to follow the God's command and therefore uh, as the Christian they're supposed to follow the instruction of God, that is the Ten Commandments. So Christ will come to take his bride. He will come, he will actually come to take uh, his bride uh, to eternity to live uh, there forever. Uh, we have said that in heaven it is the holy city of God and therefore the Christ will come to take on his uh, people, his bride and they are going to live eternally to live uh, forever. They are going to live forever. So the relationship between Christian and Jesus that is God is like a marriage. So it is a covenant and in a, in a marriage we said it is a, uh, involves the vow. It is a good example of a covenant and therefore this covenant relationship it is mutually based on love. There's uh, Christ and Jesus, they're supposed to be intact, they're supposed to love one another. So just like in the marriage whereby the husband, that is the bride and the bridegroom, they come together. They come together and establish a covenant. So it is, it is a relationship where the church, that is the bride, is expected to submit to God. Just as the 
uh, wife sh uh, uh, should be submissive to the husband so uh, the church should be the church being the bride is expected to submit to god they're supposed to be fully submitted to god and therefore they do what god is uh, want them to do so jesus christ uh, in a sacrificial love he, jesus christ died for the church to show of his or her or, or god's love he wanted to show uh, the love and that's why he read in the book of roman you will see for god demonstrated his love in a uh, toward us that when we are yet sinners christ died for us so that is a scripture that can tells you that jesus christ died for you and also in john 3 16 you see jesus died for a uh, human being so that he can save them and therefore after his love he demonstrated his sacrificial love, love to the human beings so Likewise, the Christian should be committed in their relationship with God. Because uh, Jesus Christ died for them, they're supposed to be committed to Jesus and establish a very strong relationship whereby they will know. So Jesus will come to take uh, his bride, uh, that is a Christian, and they should be faithful. They're supposed to be faithful. You see now good in this picture, that is Christ Jesus, uh, how he will come and carry all his people in come and carry his people in the church we will be with the angels the angels will take the church and the only those who will be faithful they are the one who are going to go so that means that uh, they are supposed to be united together uh, we progress uh, they should be guided by the principle of love in solving problems facing them. So wherever they encounter some problems, they are, they are, they are supposed to explain, guided by the principle of love. And according to uh, 2 Corinthians that we have just read, 11 verse 2, it teaches that uh, the bride is God's own choice. So in this un union, God cannot relate any rivals of Christ for him. And therefore, and also jealous with God, they are not supposed to be jealous. In, in, uh, indeed, they are supposed to have uh, sin. They are supposed to have uh, uh, the love that covers the multitude of sin. So the bridegroom and bride relationship is usually based on faithfulness and they are supposed to be guided by principle of love. So by observing the teaching of the disciples, the prophets, the apostles, the teachings of God, the teachings of the law of Moses, uh, the teachings of Jesus and the Bible, does the Christian will establish a bridegroom bride relationship that is based on faithfulness there should be when they observe all these teachings that you see in the bible so up to that we have come to the end of our lesson today we have come to the end of our lesson today but i want to give you some assignment that you will try so that in our pre in next lesson we are going to start from there so this is the question. You attempt this question. Discuss the bride as a symbol of the unity of the church. Describe or discuss the bride as a symbol of the unity of the church. Uh, for that and much more, if you have any question or your feedback, you can SMS us on the number on your screen. Double two five one eight double two five one five one eight. Tell us where you are watching us from. Uh, you can tell us your name and where you are watching us from. Uh, our Facebook page you can Facebook us at Elimu TV and also tweet us at uh, our Twitter handle is at Elimu underscore KE. And there we'll get your feedback, we'll get your question and uh, answer you immediately. I'm glad that you are watching Elim TV. It's a TV station where you watch and learn. Thank you. Stay tuned till we meet in the next lesson. I have been your teacher, Mr. John Gatuma. Thank you.